Guys, I've talked about this team damn near every week for the past five weeks, and it's not getting any better. The Patriots are going down in flames fast. This is a team that is two and seven and literally one of the worst teams in the league and last place in their division. Now, coming into this season, I knew the Patriots weren't going to be that good, but I could have never expected them to be this bad. Top five pick in the draft? Really? I mean, I'll take it, but like, holy sh this team is bad. Things are just ugly in New England, and there aren't really many signs of it turning around. Now, someone that definitely knows that is Robert Kraft. <laughs> and reportedly, if the Patriots lose on Sunday against the Colts in Germany, Bill Belichick could be fired. Yes, there's a legitimate chance that Bill Belichick coaches his final game for the New England Patriots on Sunday. Now, I will say this, I do find that to be a bit of a stretch. I know New England fans want Bill Belichick out, but I don't know if that'll fix all the problems. There are a lot of problems deeper than just the head coach right now, but it's definitely possible. You know, there was a video that surfaced on Twitter where Robert Kraft and his son were in the owner's suite and you can see Robert Kraft's son say to him, we're just not good enough. And frankly, that is nothing but the truth. This team isn't good enough. Now, is a change at head coach after potentially falling to two and eight the right move? I don't know. We're not the Raiders. You know, Josh McDaniels is a historically bad head coach. Bill Belichick really isn't. But you know, there's a lot of news coming out speculating that there's a possibility of him getting the boot. And first and foremost, that comes from the Boston Globe. Ben, I think his last name is Volin. He recently put out a story that did speculate that Kraft may fire Belichick before the team's buy if they fell to two and eight following a loss of the Colts in Germany. I really don't know if that's going to happen. Honestly, I don't know. There is a part of me that does not want to see Bill leave, but it's also like maybe the change would be good. Now, if he does get the boot, let's just go through the hypotheticals here. Jerron Mayo would probably be the interim head coach. He's a longtime Patriots linebacker, really a linebacker legend in New England, and now he's the inside linebackers coach. He's really considered by a lot of people to be the head coach in waiting. Before him, it was actually Matt Patricia, and God, please never let Matt Patricia get a head coaching job ever again in the NFL. He was terrible. But yeah, now it's Jerron Mayo, and he actually turned down head coaching interviews in the offseason to stay with New England. So that at least gives me an idea that New England is trying to entice him to stick around because maybe an opportunity might be coming up in the future. Like, if New England wanted to get a look at him at head coach, it would make plenty of sense. Funny enough, though, that would also mean that Bill Belichick ironically drafted his replacement. That would just be hilarious, and we would never hear the end of that. Now, it is hard to imagine a New England team without Bill Belichick at the helm, but at this point, it feels more realistic than ever. Volin did say the home run hire would probably be Mike Frabel in the offseason, who has had some recent struggles with the Titans. I don't know how realistic that is, but I would absolutely love if the Patriots were somehow able to land Vrabel. He was also a longtime Patriot. He won three Super Bowls at linebacker for them. So he's already a part of that culture and he would be a fan favorite from the jump. Similarly to how like D'Amico Ryans is with the Texans. Then in that dream scenario, Jerron Mayo would probably stay and become the defensive coordinator and Josh McDaniels would return for his third stint with the team as the new offensive coordinator. Just a little side note here. Josh McDaniels, I think is a good offensive coordinator shitty head coach, good offensive coordinator. But here's the thing. I don't think Bill O'Brien is the problem with this offense. I purely think it's a talent thing more than anything. So I wouldn't really mind seeing Bill O'Brien return next season as the offensive coordinator. But as you know, new head coach comes in, new staff comes in. And I wouldn't be shocked if Bill O'Brien's getting calls for jobs next season too. I mean, he's a guy that's had success as a coordinator in the past, and he's probably going to be a sought after one at that. So in that case, getting Josh McDaniels back in the offense would be great, but he probably wouldn't be coaching Mac Jones again. I can't believe I'm even talking about Bill Belichick getting fired and all these scenarios for the new head coach and the new future of this team because it really felt like Bill Belichick was going to be in New England for forever. It feels odd that Belichick would even get fired considering his success with the team. I mean, he's one of the greatest coaches in league history. He's been in New England for 24 years, has six Super Bowl wins, and just became the third coach ever to record 300 victories. Now, on the other side of that, just because you've been great doesn't mean you're immune to failure, and Belichick has undoubtedly failed as of late. He's 71 now, and this team has just absolutely fallen apart post-Tom Brady. I mean, it was falling apart at the end of Tom Brady's stint in New England.
hand. Like, we saw this coming from a mile away. Still though, nothing was done to try to ensure the success of the future. Bill Belichick, like I said in past videos, consistently thought that he was going to get by with lackluster talent. And Bill Belichick has done a great job in developing talent in New England since getting there. But you need stars. And the Patriots, simply put, don't have many. Really any right now that are healthy at least. I think probably one of the ugliest stats for Bill Belichick is the fact that he's 27-32 and 32 without Brady. Bill Belichick quite literally has not had a winning record since Tom Brady has left. Both of those guys were very important to the success of the New England Patriots dynasty, but it really doesn't look good for Belichick. It looks like Brady carried him and it just doesn't look like Belichick really held much weight in that relationship. Now, I do think he did. I think Tom Brady wouldn't have been the player without Bill Belichick as the head coach, but at the same time, it's like, man, this is ugly post Tom Brady. I just want him back. You know, he's old, he's chilling, he's got a podcast now, like every white dude, but it's ugly. Bill Belichick is now two and seven for the first time since 2000, which by the way, was Bill Belichick's first ever season in New England. I think it's safe to say that the glory days are over in Foxborough and it might be time to move on from him. It really might be that time. The Patriots are just really bad and Mac Jones is a problem in that. I've come to his defense countless times, week after week, year after year, that I think this dude is gonna turn it around and I think it's finally time to hang that up and it's safe to say that he is in the future of this team. He has 10 touchdowns and 11 turnovers. It really hasn't been pretty, but I mean, it's not like he's gotten that much help. I would say that Mac Jones' struggles really stem from all the turnover that he's had to deal with in his career. There's been absolutely zero consistency in his career and that for sure has not helped his development. Like Mac Jones in 2021 and Mac Jones in 2023 are two completely different players. Does Mac Jones still have those plays where he looks good and he has a good ball? And it's like, damn, maybe 2021 Mac is back. Absolutely. Does he have any wide receivers that can catch those balls that he's throwing? Absolutely not. Outside Pop Douglas. Love you, Pop. Like, I feel bad for the kid. I really do because I really like Mac Jones. I wanted him to succeed. But this Patriots team has not given him any chance to succeed in this league. The team's bad, but at the same time, you gotta be able to uplift your team to the point of trying to get them to win games. But Mac Jones isn't that quarterback. There are a lot of quarterbacks in the NFL that aren't that type of quarterback. Mac Jones is a game manager, and the Patriots knew that when they took him. But it's hard to manage the game when you have third stringers out there. I just gotta say that. The Patriots are a bad team that has been absolutely decimated by injuries. The wide receiver one, Kendrick Bourne, ended up tearing his ACL and will be out for the season and that alone is a gut punch to this team that already doesn't have really any talent at the wide receiver position. It's not like Kendrick Bourne would be a wide receiver one on 85% of other teams in the NFL, but yet he was one in New England. Not to say I didn't like Kendrick Bourne, not to say I don't think he's a good wide receiver, but let's be honest here, Kendrick Bourne is not typically a wide receiver one. Still though, for a team with no talent at the position, Kendrick Bourne going out with an ACL injury for the year is a killer blow to this team. Then they're pretty much two at this point, I think pretty solidified, was Devontae Parker. He missed this past week with a concussion, and because of that, we really saw clearly just how bad Mac Jones' weapons are. Juju Smith-Schuster has been a flop of a signing. Like, I like his personality. I think he's probably a good guy. His TikTok dances were I, I guess. But at the end of the day, I think you really should have just like made the effort to re-sign Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers, in my opinion, is like a bottom tier wide receiver one option for some teams. Like, yeah, would he be more successful in a wide receiver two role? Yes, and he has been in Las Vegas. But having him back on the team this year would have been huge. I would have loved to have Kendrick Bourne and Jacoby Myers as the one two on this team. Like still, that's not pretty, but it's sure as hell a lot better than what it's been. We signed Juju to become the wide receiver one and now dude's wide receiver five. But injuries haven't just decimated the offense. They've also decimated the defensive side of the ball too. Matthew Judon was probably the best player on the defense, maybe even on the team. But of course he got injured against Dallas, I believe. He tore his bicep and now he's out for the season. Then on top of that, first round rookie cornerback Christian Gonzalez, who was off to a fantastic start in the NFL. I think this kid's gonna have plenty of promise and a great 
bright future in the league. He tore his labrum, so he's out. It's just a complete mess in New England. I wish that I had anything good to say about this team right now, but they're one of the worst teams in the league, and stats back that up. Like I said, they have a top five pick in the draft at this point. I was hoping maybe we'd go up a spot. You know, the Giants might win a game here or there, but now Daniel Jones is out, and they're starting Tommy DeVito. So I'm pretty sure the Patriots are going to lock into the fifth overall pick, which means they will probably miss out on the Caleb Williams or the Drake May. But this is a really good quarterback draft. And at this point, you go quarterback. Like I know at one point I was like, maybe try to build around Mac, but like, no, you go quarterback. This quarterback draft is too good not to go quarterback with a top five pick. And if you keep Bill Belichick, he's probably going to take another guard out of Chattanooga. The Breakfast Club. Don't, don't. It really has just been a messy season for New England, and it might just cost Bill Belichick his job. Now, it's surreal that the era could be ending, but honestly, it was amazing in every single way. I don't regret a second of it. I enjoyed every single second of the success that Bill Belichick and Tom Brady brought me as a childhood Patriots fan, but now it might be time to move on. Thank you guys for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you guys like this one, make sure to smash that like button. And if you don't already, subscribe to the channel down below and press that bell notification so you never miss an upload by us. Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think the Patriots should do. Do you guys think they should get rid of Bill Belichick and give him the boot? Or do you think they should hold on to him and just kind of make him step down from GM duties? Because to be honest, in my opinion, a lot of the problems with Bill Belichick come from his GM side. Let me know down below. Thank you guys for making it all the way to the end. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.